This is a Darton Classic SL. This is the bow I made the toothbrush rest for. It is 60 inches AMO. It's a 46 pound bow. Recommended manufacturer's bracelet from an old Darton catalog is eight to eight and a half inches. And I have this set at uh, right about eight and a quarter. Why eight and a quarter? Because it's in between eight and eight and a half. No, and it, I don't know how it came to me. One day I was just thinking about it. Um, you're, you're tuning it because you want to find the bow's spot where it comes to rest most naturally and the spot where after release it goes through the least amount of shock, gives you the least amount of hand shock. So essentially we're trying to find the point where it will give the least amount of hand shock. Um, and I believe that directly relates to how much the bow would just vibrate even by plucking it. So I, I almost literally tune it like a guitar. So this is what I do. <laughs> I just literally hold it lightly and I give a little pluck and I listen to it and I feel it. I... I find the point where that twang is the lowest in like audibly it's it's the lowest point compared to other heights I'll go up and down from this brace height to show the comparison of the sound seven eighths yeah seven seven eighths so that would be one eighth inch under recommended Okay, we are at eight and five eighths, if I can get the focus, there we go, kind of, eight and five eighths. Okay, what I... I hear is the twang's louder and it's also the, the pitch is higher it's like the the amplitude the volume is about as loud or the same at seven and seven eighths or at the low end as at the high end but at the low end you're going to get a lower pitched twang versus the high end you're going to have a higher pitched twang and they're both going to be audibly roughly the, e even. Going back to the midpoint, eight and a quarter. So I basically pick eight and a quarter. I try to find, not by the pitch, but the, the amplitude, how loud it is. I try to find the, the least audible twang. Um, and that's where I arrive at eight and a quarter. Let's go back to eight and a quarter, shoot this thing up. The eight and a quarter, one more time. It's not the quietest bow, I think, uh, because it's not a Flemish twist. And it's almost like a combination of Flemish twist, endless loop, because the way they have the serving wrapped around the end loop, it, it, it twangs. So I, I modified my block target, my, my old foam block target. I took this little piece of like yellow foam mat that I had. It's like kids play mat you put outside. And I just shoved it in between foam 
just so I have this yellow line. It's it's like my vertical blank bail. If you just focus on just, just the vertical, just 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 worry about getting your arrows in a line. So you're not like fully aiming. All you're really doing is focusing on lifting your bow arm up and getting your release solid. And you don't really need to aim to do that. And the vertical line is just an indication of if you are achieving those things. Um, if I'm nailing that line, going straight down, I, I know I'm doing something right. Um, and I'm not really worried about aiming because really when you aim, when we all aim, we are really trying to aim up and down. We're not really doing the left and right aim. At least I don't. And if you are, then there's something wrong. You need to look at your shot processes again. If you're focusing on your left and right aim, that means you're not lining up to your target because that should all be taken care of just by how you line up to the target and how you address the string and bring your bow arm up. So your left and right should be taken care of just off of your stance and your form. Yeah, I've got my knocking point set five sixteenths above. That's just what works for me. I did not bear shaft tune to find that. I've been using five sixteenths for over a year now. Um, I don't know how I arrived at that, to tell you the truth. I definitely started... I didn't go to the recommended from one, like, the videos I watched when I first started out. Everyone's saying start at a half inch or so. And then move your way down. I think I maybe started at, like, three eighths. Tried a quarter. And landed at five sixteenths. Um, I think I maybe got a little bit of porpoising at one point, either at half inch or a quarter. And then as soon as I went to five sixteenths, all the porpoising just went away. I got good arrow flight out of every bow I shoot, five sixteenths. Uh, my arrows I shoot are anywhere from roughly 500 grains to 600 grains. Uh, I typically use 150 grain points up front. I've got my split finger tab. I uh, started shooting split finger again a few months ago while I was shooting three under for more than a year. This is my very first tab that I just made, a two pieces of leather, threw a shoestring in there. This is from a tab I bought, and I just screwed that on there. And I also shoot with finger sling, which is just this like big piece of cord that I found that works well. And for today, this is my only bow that I've set up with a toothbrush rest. So I like shooting off the shelf, but the shelf is super flat.
Oh, yeah. I, I, I need to lift some weights. I'm out of shape. I don't know if you can tell. I look pretty skinny. But that, that last one was really hard to pull back. And it's 46 pound bow, 28 inches. I'll have to pull out the bow scale. So it's definitely pulling over 50 when I'm pulling it. So, but anyhow, that's warm up.